75 million dollars might seem like a lot of money, but some people can drop that in an afternoon. For 75 mil, you might think that you could buy several houses. That may be true for some homes, but for this one, it'll cost you the whole 75 million just to get the keys. The 15,605 square foot luxury home is the epitome of a modern Los Angeles house. What do I mean by that? Well, let's get out the checklist. Does it have an unconventional architecture design that looks like several cubes on top of each other, but in like a really cool way? Check. Is the interior of the home so flawlessly white that you'd forever be terrified of drinking coffee in your own home? Check. Does it have a pool that seems to be flexing on all other pools like it's a post-marvel Kumail Nanjiani? That's a big check. It features 9 bedrooms, 12 bathrooms, a gym, and a detached guest house. All it needs is a giant home movie theater to check off everything on the- Oh wait, there it is, yep, it's got everything. Surrounded by palm trees on all sides, this home is nothing but luxury from the moment you step inside. First, you'll see its winding staircase that takes you up into the enormous master suite with its own blue eye painted cabinets. Further inside, you'll see a neon walled movie theater, a spacious home office with a chandelier, and a dining table perfect for dinner parties. Or really intimidating business meetings. Just depends on the mood you're in, I guess. I would gladly just move into this guest house. It has a spacious kitchen that blends right into a comfortable living room with plenty of view of the pool. And we've gotta talk about this pool. Apparently, it's the largest pool in all of Beverly Hills. Seriously, it takes up almost the entirety of the back lawn. It also features an underwater sound system and a great view of the Rose Garden. So what is keeping this home from selling? Well, you probably guessed it. That $75 million price tag is just a little too much for anyone to make an offer. The hit Netflix series Selling Sunset is all about real estate in Los Angeles. The episode that featured Turkish property developer Adnan Sen featured this $75 million house. You remember him, he was the one who wanted Davina to sell his house for $80 million. Then he looked at her like he was a mobster and she just told him that she'd failed to take out Batman. So who is this guy and why is he so stubborn about this property? Well, our guy Adnan is a Turkish real estate developer who founded and runs Sin Properties. Basically, he buys a space, builds a crazy expensive pad on the space, sells it, and then does the whole thing all over again. He's already built several incredible homes in Beverly Hills just like this one. That includes this 39.9 million dollar, 11,000 square foot, 7 bedroom, 10 bath mansion that features a very similar style. In fact, all of their homes feature the same style and the same multi-million dollar price tag. Just to put things in perspective, the average home in Beverly Hills sells for around 3.5 million. So this home may end up staying on the market, even if it does have the Kumail Nanjiani of pools. So, if buying one of the nicest homes in Beverly Hills is too small for you, what about owning your own private island like your Leonardo DiCaprio? Billionaire Craig McCaw was living his own Leonardo DiCaprio dream when he lived on the $75 million island. The 780 acre property right outside of Victoria is the second largest privately owned island in the world. McCaw himself picked the island up for around $19 million in 1994. Now it features a 5,000 square foot estate, six guest cottages, and an airstrip. That airstrip is perfect for bringing people over to enjoy the 18-hole golf course. Not just any course though, one designed by Nicholas Designs. In case you didn't know, they make really, really nice golf courses worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. The quirkiest part about this island is that it features a fake Old West style town. So if you really wanted to build your own West World, this is the ideal spot. Aside from that, it has all of the views, potential hiking, and kayaking spots you'd expect from your own private island. McCaw didn't end up selling the place and took it off the market, so he might be willing to accept a cheaper offer. Maybe 65 million? Okay, okay, maybe an island is too big. I mean, I don't even know what kind of staff you'd hire to maintain a nice looking island. So let's look for advice from one woman who really knows how to spend tons of cash with style, Kim Kardashian. Kardashians have been spotted many times partying on one of the best super yachts in the world, and I do mean super. Let me introduce you to Axioma. She's a 236 foot ship built in 2013. The yacht has a cruising speed of 14 knots with a top speed of 17 knots. 
It has a range of 6,000 nautical miles with 172,400 liter fuel tanks for a long journey. If just the thought of that makes you queasy, don't worry. Axioma features a stabilizing system that reduces roll motion for performance and range both in still waters and in choppy. The yacht is designed to take up to 12 guests and 20 crew members. As far as rooms go, we have a VIP suite, two double rooms, and two convertible twin cabins, each with their own color scheme. As far as ridiculous amenities go, Axioma doesn't disappoint. We've got a fully stocked bar, a salon, a lower deck movie theater, a sun deck with a barbecue station, and a steam room. The company also provides fun water toys such as paddle boards, kayaks, inflatable slides, and diving equipment. She was first shown off at the Monaco Yacht Show under the name Red Square. Yeah, there was no way that name was gonna stick. The ship definitely impressed. It currently can be chartered for a weekly rate of $523,500 for the summers and $343,000 for the winters. But why rent when you can drop the 75 mil to own? When I think of things worth $75 million, my first thought isn't usually a car. Don't get me wrong, a classic car can go for quite a lot of money. In 2018, the Ferrari 250 GTO sold for $48 million, the biggest price ever for a car sold at auction. So how do you beat the price of one of the most sought-after Ferraris in the world? Well, naturally, on another Ferrari, of course. 2018 was apparently a very good year in big-time Ferrari deals because a 1963 Ferrari GTO was sold in a private deal for 70 million dollars. As far as the classic car collector world goes, Ferrari GTOs are considered the biggest trophies. Apparently this trophy was sold by a German collector to David McNeil. He's the founder of WeatherTech, which designs car floor mats among other car accessories. Apparently that's a pretty good business because he's worth 1 billion dollars. Thanks to its V12 engine, the 63 GTO could hit a top speed of 174 miles per hour, could go 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds, and has 296 horsepower under the hood. Back in the day, you could buy one of the 36 models for $18,000, so long as you were personally approved by Enzo Ferrari himself. This particular Ferrari won the 1964 Tour de France, so a few years before Ford versus Ferrari, but that's the time period we're talking about. Buying this piece of Ferrari history puts McNeil in the GTO Club, which also includes the likes of Ralph Lauren and Walmart's Rob Walton. Spending 75 mil on a mansion, an island, or a piece of automobile history makes a lot of sense. I don't know that I can say the same for dropping that kind of dough on a cake. Of course, that's what Debbie Wingham is all about. She's a couture designer who specializes in things that are worth insane amounts of money. For instance, she also made the most expensive shoes in the world worth 15.1 million. And I thought classic Jordans were expensive. Like anyone who watched any of those shows like Cake Boss, which are all about how awesome cake design can be, Debbie Wingham brought her talents to baked goods. She managed to make a cake for an engagement party that had a price tag of $75 million. The cake was designed to look like a fashion runway, and frankly, it just doesn't look that good. It is lined with these creepy claymation looking edible people. So how is it worth 75 mil? The cake itself featured flavors like Madagascan vanilla bean, chocolate truffle cream, and Belgium chocolate. Let's be real though, I don't care how good that chocolate truffle cream is, there's no way it's worth tens of millions. Well, I should probably mention that the cake also included 4,000 diamonds, such as a 6.4 carat yellow diamond, a 5.2 carat pink diamond, and 15 5 carat white diamonds. Those diamonds alone cost around $45 million. On top of that, the runway itself was made of 401 carat and 73 3 carat white diamonds. It also featured 75 3 carat black diamonds. So yeah, 75 million is making a lot more sense now. When I say $75 million painting, what comes to mind? Probably something by the likes of Leonardo da Vinci, Monet, or Renoir, right? Huge paintings that reconstruct the very nature of beauty in ways no artist ever has. Well, this $75 million painting is not like that. Mark Rothko's number one, Royal Red and Blue, sold for 75 big ones in 2012. To an uninformed eye, this painting just looks like three random colors that a kid could have made. Yet Rothko's name carries quite a bit of weight. I mean, other paintings by the artist have netted over $80 million. So what's the deal with all these colors? Well, he's an influential abstract expressionist. 
He was radical in the world of post-World War II modernism for his fields of vibrant color that could provoke enormous emotional reactions. While a passing glance might not see anything special here, a deeper look could find the tragedy and ecstasy Rothko was trying to recreate. Basically, this man was a painting equivalent of a rock star, and that's why any auction over his works erupt into the art world equivalent of a knife fight. To some collectors, 75 million might seem a little low. Unfortunately, the mansion made of glass was 80 million dollars. Five million short. <laughs>